We are Saxon and Nico. And in November 2021, we went to the COP26 in Glasgow to interview different voices, including decision makers, scientists and environmental activists. We attended COP26 as part of the research for our series, Mission Find Aral, which tells the story of the Aral Sea. In the space of 40 years, the Aral Sea turned from the world's fourth largest lake to the world's youngest desert. Despite the fact it is considered by the UN as one of the worst environmental disasters of the world, it is a situation lesser known by the general public. At COP26, we wanted to learn about the other lesser known environmental issues and about what actions and solutions are needed for a better future. I come from Bhutan and uh, Bhutan is a, a small country uh, in the Himalayas, Eastern Himalayas. It's a totally a mountainous uh, country, uh, and I'm the, the Minister for Agriculture and Forest in, in the government. Uh, and just first of all, there was an interesting point made by one of the speakers about um, how you are Minister of Forestry and also Agriculture. Could you talk about how that works and how you find that, that special uh, combination? Yeah, in Bhutan, uh, uh, unlike in other countries, in bigger countries, uh, in Bhutan we have uh, the agriculture, forest and livestock all under uh, one ministry and uh, uh, as uh, the, the Jeff CEO was uh, asking, I was, uh, I was explaining that you know, in Bhutan uh, we so-called the renewable natural resources uh, uh, strategy is developed and then all these three agencies actually are the, the agencies that uh, uh, are concerned of the renewable natural resources. So be it from the forest or agriculture or the livestock, these are all renewable natural resources. So we, uh, it makes it uh, quite convenient to have the agencies uh, under one ministry. Uh, as uh, the Jeff CEO was saying, when we have an uh, independent agriculture ministry and the, the Minister of Forest, then often there, there are conflicts uh, of the, the space uh, ownership of the, the uh, land. So, uh, the, uh, so that way, when, when the, all the agencies are under one ministry, we can uh, coordinate, uh, integrate and then plan it together uh, for the ben benefit of both the forest conservation as well as the agriculture of the food security. Great. And could you talk a li little bit about how exactly the climate crisis is affecting Bhutan? Bhutan, uh, uh, as a mountainous country and a landlocked country, definitely is highly vulnerable to climate change. Uh, and the, the impacts uh, on the water resources, which which are mostly snow and glaciers uh, fed uh, water resources. Uh, so the glaciers are receding, the water resources are uh, drying up, the glacial lakes are, uh, I mean, at times the glacial lakes get expanded with the, the more uh, melting of the glaciers and then the glacial lake outburst uh, uh, floods, which actually drains out all the, the water storage in the highlands and then ultimately we lose our water resources. The other thing is with the global warming, the, with the acceleration of the, the uh, uh, soil, soil uh, evaporation, the, the, the water content in the soils changes, which uh, leads to uh, forest pattern changes and the, um, you know, the, the migratory uh, risks of the, the pests and diseases. Uh, so the, and, and of course, the, with the uh, soil moisture loss, the agricultural productivity uh, decreases. Uh, and uh, I mean. Uh, basically, uh, uh, the, the climate change impact is very seri very serious uh, on uh, on Bhutan from the water, uh, from the loss of water resources, from the loss of food resources, and from uh, the, the risks of the landslides, floods, uh, impacting on the the human settlements and the infrastructures. And uh, I understand that Bhutan was the first. Um, carbon neutral country. Yes. Uh, what do you think the rest of the world can learn from Bhutan and, and how its people operate? Uh, yes, Bhutan uh, was the first country to declare uh, carbon neutrality and then we have uh, pledged a commitment to remain carbon neutral for all times to come. And then uh, we would like all, all the other nations uh, across the, the world to follow us uh, as we learn that uh, for the sustainability of our livelihood, environment conservation is very important, forest is very important, so, and for the, for the climate uh, mitigation, basically for the uptake of the, the carbon, we need to have more forests. So we would like uh, to lead to all other countries, for firstly, for uh, increasing the forest coverage in their own countries, uh, and uh, uh, reducing the uh, emissions as much as possible and then of course helping the countries like Bhutan who are committed to 
uh, environment conservation and then uh, you know, uh, tackling uh, the climate change. Uh, it, it will be very, uh, very valuable, actually, uh, valuable input for the investors uh, to, to support countries like Bhutan in uh, uh, environment conservation and adaptation of the LTCs. Brilliant. We, we spoke to an environmentalist from Nepal uh, last week. Is there any way that you can um, collaborate with other mountainous countries and form some kind of union, perhaps? Yes. Uh, a, a few. I mean, basically, almost a decade ago, the, uh, Nepal initiated the, the, the Mountain Alliance uh, uh, initiative, and then Bhutan was always there behind Nepal because both Nepal and uh, Bhutan are the, the neighboring countries in the Himalayas. And uh, we def definitely share all the, the, uh, the climate risks as well as uh, the, the adaptation needs, and uh, we, we definitely need to work together.